Hi guys, it's me again, and today I want to talk to you all about World of Warcraft Plunderstorm and why I stopped playing Retail WoW. And you will see that after I start explaining this, it makes sense why these two things are very well connected. So Plunderstorm, for anybody who hasn't seen it, is basically a new mode of playing Retail WoW, and it is classless, it doesn't have any uh, like kind of meta level progression, everybody starts in, and it doesn't matter if you've done like 50 games or zero games, or you've played the game 15 years, uh, you don't have any mounts, you don't have any other transmog, it is a completely new version, imagine like thinking of you take everything out of WoW and then you just put everybody in uh, Arathi Highlands from the, uh, I guess like the Warfront in BFA, and let them fucking kill each other and it's classless gameplay it's not like you can play as a warrior or a mage but you can pick up different abilities and you know use those to kill people like the same as any other br and obviously the last man standing wins so this has kind of been a surprise it's been a huge surprise uh blizzard recently uh was you know kind of teasing this a little bit everybody didn't really know what to expect i don't think anybody expected again that blizzard was going to in 2024 release a battle royale version of the game and uh i've got to say i think this is great i'm definitely here for it and i really hope that blizzard makes more uh you know kind of crazy decisions like this i think that they need to take more risks Right now, I think that World of Warcraft is in kind of a slow bleed out phase where you're always going to have people that come that like kind of fall away from the game for like there could be like 10 or 20 different reasons for this, right? Is it because they're uh, bored of it? Is it because they now have three kids? And so they don't have time to play the game anymore. Do they not like the story? Uh, you know, do they just move on from playing video games? I, I don't know. There could be a million different reasons, right? But at the end of the day, I think that World of Warcraft has an aging audience. And if you have an aging audience, what happens whenever you're aging? You fucking die. And so it's got a dying audience. And I think that's exactly what's happened with Retail WoW. Is that the game has incre increasingly catered more towards the most hardcore elements of the player base by designing you know for example you like a mental mythic plus uh the way that pvp is designed now the way that raids are designed uh the levels of complexity of the game are extremely high especially whenever you go back and you compare it to something like wrath of the lich king or even something like cataclysm and especially obviously burning crusade or vanilla wow and i think that in the process of trying to cater to a much more experienced type of player what they've ended up doing is they've also alienated a lot of that kind of middle ground 80 percent of players you know if you want to think about it uh you know visually think of it as like there's 100 percent of players and the bottom 10 percent of players and the top 10 percent of players i think are actually pretty much well satisfied and pretty well served from retail wow but it's that middle 80% that I really feel like doesn't get that great of an experience from the game. And I think that's why many of them have shifted away from it, including myself. So why have I stopped playing Retail WoW? I guess I'll talk about that and talk about why this mode excites me and why I hope, like, basically the philosophy of this mode will continue. So the reason why I stopped playing Retail WoW is actually pretty fucking simple it's because i felt like i was on a treadmill that as soon as i got to the you know the top of the treadmill they reset me down to the bottom and i think this is very common in expansions for say right you know you have a new expansion come out everybody's gear is basically replaced you had anomalies right like how you could use tier three in karazam which i thought was really cool from vanilla to burning crusade but for the most part a uh, expansion is a full reset of the game but it feels like to me in retail wow that each patch is a full reset of the game and i don't feel like i'm really getting my time's worth like the value of my time isn't really being respected whenever my gear is getting replaced every single patch wholesale and i'm not talking about like obviously like my high-end raid gear but i'm talking about like i have raid gear and then i go and i do outdoor world quest content and it has better item level than my raid gear from the previous patch i feel like i'm like I i'm just playing the patch and i'm not playing the game and it makes me feel like there's no actual reason for me to want to like oh let's log on right now so i can play the game like if i compare this to for example like burning crusade or classic wow like, I would want to raid AQ because I knew Nax would come out, right? And so I wanted to be ready for Nax, and so I could kind of keep the ball rolling, and I had something to, like, look forward to. There was, like, a greater goal with the gear, 
And with Retail WoW, I don't really feel compelled to do that because I know that every single tier is just going to replace everything and the catch-up gear is going to totally invalidate anything that I worked for in the previous season. And that just kind of, you know, I, and it's not that I, I didn't do that. I mean, fuck, I did that for, like, I don't know, like, I played Legion. I was like, what, seven years ago? Like, oh, my God. Uh, so I did it for many, many years. But at a certain point, you just reach a level of fatigue. And you kind of need to just take a break. And it's interesting because I haven't really played WoW for, I don't know, really, like, maybe six months or so, retail WoW. And I still consider myself a WoW player. I still, you know, like, I don't... You know, I, I have the launcher still. I load it up every time I open up my computer again. And, you know, like, I, I still have the mindset of playing WoW. It's just that it kind of doesn't really happen. And I think that's really kind of the reason. And there's just been so much bloat in the game. And I think that this bloat exists on every single facet of the game. I think that there are too many different types of spells in the game. And I'm also... I want to make sure that you guys understand this. Like, I'm not speaking from my perspective. I play the game professionally it, it was my job to make guides for the game so i don't think it's really that big of a deal for me to figure out like you know what spells do but whenever you think about like being able to play this game casually being able to enjoy it as just a, an average player i think that it's become increasingly difficult to do so in retail wow and to have any fulfillment out of it because again like, in order to do, like, get any type of, like, really decent gear, you generally have to do content that's, that's quite challenging in some cases. And then also, like, you have add-ons, which is going to be another factor I'm going to talk about that kind of offset a lot of that challenge. So what ends up happening is that I, I feel like basically the game has gotten so complex and so convoluted, and there are just, like, so many different layers of you know, like reasoning and rationality for different changes and things in the game that whenever you really step back and you ask yourself, why is this in the game? The answer is usually, well, because it's always been there. And I think that's not a very good reason, personally. And I think there's too many things in WoW that are like that. And I've noticed this a lot, like especially after I've stepped away from the game and I've played other stuff, is that a lot of WoW players view being bad at their game as like a... Uh, it's like a personal, like, uh, it's like a flaw with you on a personal level. Uh, I think that a lot of them, because WoW is such a big, important part of their life, and I used to be like this myself, and that's why I'm really kind of talking about it, is because I'm really just referring to my opinions, uh, you know, maybe from like 10 years ago, and, you know, contextualizing them around the way that I feel now, and it's just a completely different frame of reference. And uh, I've noticed this a lot with like a lot of people that play just one singular game, is that they view uh, competency in that game as like a, a personality trait. You know, this is a big deal for them. It matters a lot to them because that's like the only game they play. They invested so much time into it, so they care about it a lot. But I think that what WoW has really lost out on over the years is the sense of real community and MMO that the game used to have. And I really, and I, I know that like a lot of people probably get mad whenever I talk about this because I just come off like a massive classic Andy. And I want to say that's because I completely am. I think that classic World of Warcraft is better than every other version of the game put together. Uh, I think that even Burning Crusade was a massive downgrade in a lot of cases that mattered in ways that are not, um, you know, like uh, numerically measurable. And uh, Retail WoW is just so far divorced from what made Classic WoW great, it's really not even the same game anymore. So whenever I think about that myself, I ask myself, like, what would get me to come back and play Retail WoW? Because, like, again, the game is just so full of, you know, a thousand mounts, two thousand pets, five hundred titles, thirty thousand achievement points, and there's just so much in the game that I just couldn't imagine a person that's, like, you know, wanting to get into a game, like, why would you want to start playing this? It's just... There's so much to it. It's like you're never going to be able to get... There's like 15 years of FOMO content in the game. Like, how, how can you ever, like, get somebody who's, like, a new player to want to do this? And I think the truth is that you can't. And so what's happened, I think, over the years with WoW is that they've... they've they, they, what basically, what WoW Retail is doing now is they're... Like, I'm no longer the target audience for Retail WoW. I'm not. Uh, it, it's, it's a much more hardcore game... Uh, Mythic Plus, Raiding, PvP, and then there's, like, this, like, casual bullshit content. But, like, there's not that mid-core content that's, you know, fulfilling and exciting to do 
but it doesn't require you to download 17 different add-ons and you know be playing the game on a schedule with 20 other people and i think that's really kind of where they've lost people like me and a lot of other people like friends of mine too and whenever i think about the way the game used to be and everything uh i i like the idea of people kind of like not really knowing everything about the game and I think now, like, the game is just so... It, it's extremely over-designed, and it's also over-theory-crafted to the point to where, like... Yeah, I was talking to, to somebody, like, literally, like, I was on, on a phone call, like, an, an hour ago, and they were telling me, like, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I was playing Season of Discovery, and nowadays you have, uh, you know, like, he got the epics, uh, you know, bow from BFD and everything... And then before you know it, he couldn't even get into a group for Black Fathom Deeps. It's a level 25 raid in Season of Discovery because of uh, the fact that people are like, they want like parses and logs for BFD. And so the game has just devolved in so many ways. And after seeing kind of how that's happened, I think a big reason has been because of add-ons. And I, I know this might be an unpopular opinion with a lot of like very serious WoW players, but I genuinely think that add-ons have done a tremendous amount of uh, damage to the game. And I think this is a wholesale problem because obviously like there are some add-ons that are really not bad, but what the add-ons that aren't bad do is they remove the sense of urgency that Blizzard should have to actually fix the base game. And so now the solution is no longer Blizzard fix bags. It's Blizzard, you know, you don't need to worry about this because we can just download bag on and everything's fine. Uh, I'd really like Blizzard and I know this again, you know, like current WoW players might really disagree with this, but I, I really believe it. Uh, I'd love to see every single add-on be disabled in every single capacity. I'd love to see, and this is going to be, again, extremely poetic from a person who used to be making, um, you know, like a big dick DPS guides, right? How to get the highest parse on, like, this fight. I think they should disable parsing. I think they should completely disable it. I think it's ruined the game. I, I genuinely do. I, I think that the fixation on quantitative numerals and measuring everything through that thing through that one factor and these different other like uh, quantitative vectors has totally ruined the game in every single aspect. It's ruined PvP, uh, it's ruined raiding, it's ruined Mythic Plus, and it hasn't ruined it for high-end players, but it has ruined it for uh, mid-core players. And I think that whenever you lose enough mid-core players, the game does begin to effectively die because those people are really the lifeblood of the game. It's not the hyper-casuals or the hyper-hardcore players. It's all of the people in the middle, and I think that's really where the over-reliance on add-ons really comes from. And I know there will be some people who will say, well, I don't need to use add-ons. That's great, congratulations, but the best players in the world use them because they make the best players in the world even better. So even if you can do it without add-ons, that doesn't mean that you couldn't do it better with add-ons. And the fact that add-ons act as a force multiplier for good players to not only, you know, make them really good, but now on top of that, they have these add-ons where you have a tremendous amount of, uh, of ability that people have to just completely be playing a totally different game. And it's like also, this is a really good way to look at it. And this is something that I kind of like realized whenever I was watching a retail WoW rating stream is that I was listening to it and I was hearing like all the DBM and like all these sound effects like run away little girl, ding, 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 taunt boss. And then it's like move left and it's like telling you all these things. And it felt like I was like, it, it reminded me, this is going to sound crazy. It reminded me of, so like we had this thing in America called Guantanamo Bay that we put prisoners and like terrorists in and there was like a big controversy because they kept doing what was effectively psychological torture by playing really annoying sounds to these people for like 16 or 18 hours a day and it was a huge big problem it was like a big a big controversy and i'm thinking to myself oh my god these people are basically signing up to be terrorists in Guantanamo Bay, listening to these fucking sounds nonstop raiding, and they're paying $15 a month to be able to do it. Like, how, how could you even imagine this is happening? And here we are. And I just feel like whenever you take a step back and you look at how ridiculous the game has become in every asset, I, I think that a lot of those reasons have been because of add-ons. 
and I don't like having to redo my add-ons every patch. I think it's annoying, and uh, I also feel like I have to do it because there's a reason why everybody uses them. It's because they're extremely useful, and I don't think that that functionality should exist in the game, and I think it is a unfair and artificial vector of difficulty that creates a barrier to entry for new players. And so I'd like to see every single add-on in the game completely disabled with no restrictions on what those add-ons are, uh, no exceptions, nothing. Uh, no DBM, no bag-on, no uh, weak auras, no big wigs, no uh, all the things, nothing. Uh, remove all add-ons, period. And just make the base game UI better rather than expecting uh, unpaid interns to do it for you. And so uh, basically, which is what add-on developers are. So uh, that's that's number one reason why I stopped playing, and uh, that's why you know seeing something like Plunderstorm now is actually a really heartening thing for me because Plunderstorm doesn't have any add-ons. There are no you can't use add-ons in Plunderstorm. So it, it's crazy. Like I'm basically you know, I'm I'm getting what I want. You know I'm the target audience. Oh my god! And I played the game and I really enjoyed it and I had a great time. It was really fun for me. So I was so happy to be able to do that. And it reminded me about like kind of how fun the game can be if you're able to just go in and play the game. Imagine that, guys. You can just log on if you haven't played in a while and just start playing the game. You don't need to spend 35 minutes looking up a rotation, 25 minutes downloading add-ons, 30 minutes, you know, troubleshooting the add-ons, 20 minutes after that, you know, finding the weak core plugins, and then you do all that and you queue up for a raid and they decline you because you don't have ahead of the curve. And the raid came out last week. And so, like, what's really going on here? Like, is this really a good experience for anyone? And I think that, again, like, as WoW has tried to cater, and I think this is what happens, like, it, it's really no surprise that a lot of the development team and the people that work on WoW are former high-end players for the game, and so it would make sense that those people are talking primarily to other high-end players and are coming from the perspective of high-end players. And I think that with game design, there is as much a point, a part of it that is, uh, you know, technical and game-focused, but there is an equal part, I think this is especially true with MMOs, that is about psychology. And I think that that's really where Blizzard has dropped the ball, is that the psychology of the game is extremely demoralizing for a person like me. And I think there's a lot of people that feel the same way that I do. You know, comment if you do. I think there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, this is, this is the exactly the same way they feel. And whenever I, I see these things happen in the game, it can be very disappointing. And there's just so much to do. It's like an insurmountable thing where I can't see a new player coming into the game and having anything other than just uh, exhaustion, thinking about it. And that's why I really like things like Plunderstorm. And I, I hope that the philosophy behind Plunderstorm is going to be something that Blizzard is going to try to take forward and try to really iterate on and make better than what it currently is. Because I think that there's a huge future for WoW as a game. I think that people love the IP of WoW. But the truth is that there are so many other elements of the game that, you know, it's just, it, it's not as good as it should be. Or it's not the quality. There's just a lot of reasons why it's not that, why it's not what it should be. And I think that people just haven't felt like the game has appealed to them in the same way. And so the point that I'm really kind of making with all this is that I really think Plunderstorm, I really, no, I don't think, I hope, I really hope Plunderstorm is going to be the beginning of the end of Blizzard trying to make content for this like hyper-invested group of people that want to treat and play the game like it's a career. I've found this to be incredibly toxic to the player base. And I think that I've also contributed to this myself in the past. And I think that that's one of the big reasons how I know that it's so bad is because I was one of the ones doing it. And I've seen how it's affected the game over the years and it's just become so reductive to what everything the game can be. And I think that creating modes of the game and making the game more accessible to new players is the only way to make the game last for the next 10 years. I think there's always going to be WoW servers, right? Uh, people love WoW, they're always going to love WoW. But at the same time, it would be great if these servers were, you know, full of populated new players and people that were excited to play the game. 
And I just don't really think that WoW has that kind of excitement anymore. And one of the big reasons for that, I don't think is the graphics. I don't think it's the age of the game. I think it's because it's so hard to get into. And Blizzard adding things like Plunderstorm into the game make it easier to get into for casual players because the amount of information, like, here's a good way to say it. Like, a lot of the best PvPers in the game, you don't even know how good they are. That's how good they are. Because they've been playing so long and they know so much about the game. People, like, they see them play and they're like, oh yeah, I could do that you don't even know what's happening and it, it's incredible in a way but at the same time it does indicate something that is terribly wrong which is the fact that like you can't even appreciate a high skill player in the game because the game is so hard to read and understand and i'd really like to see blizzard try to actually address this in a big way and i hope that plunderstorm and the philosophy of you know no add-ons no 50,000 different types of cosmetic bullshit uh, and just kind of like a, a reset of the game, I really hope Blizzard actually takes this seriously and starts expanding this philosophy to the rest of the game too. Because that's what I'd really like to see is I'd like to see more of the game that's accessible to more people. I, I want to see WoW do well. And it's weird because as I said, I've I felt like I've played WoW and you know I've been a WoW player this whole time, but I haven't played retail in six months. And I'd like to have a reason for that to change. And I think that in order to create that reason for me personally, you have to make the game easier to get into, easier to get excited about. You have to make rewards in the game feel better. And you have to give people more ownership of their success and make the game feel more like a social experience. Because I feel like right now it's at an all-time low for that kind of stuff. And I know that Dragonflight has tried to do some things to improve that. But at the same time, I don't think that those things have really been enough to motivate me to keep playing so and again i'll probably come back and play whenever i feel like it right i mean it's not like again i'm not like i'm not like oh i'm not playing this game anymore no i'm just simply i haven't logged on for a while that's all and uh i want to explain kind of why and why seeing things like plunderstorm gives me a lot of hope for the game because it indicates to me that maybe hopefully Blizzard sees the same problems that I and a lot of other people see with the game, and they're trying to work incrementally to try to solve these problems. So uh, the last thing that I want to add, and one thing I, I really wanted to bring up, I'm glad I remembered this, is that they need to make Plunderstorm a event that you can play without a subscription for at least a small period in time. The reality is that Plunderstorm is a game mode that's made for people that don't play retail WoW right now. But the problem is that the only people that can play it are people that are playing Retail WoW right now. Or actually, you can play it if you play Classic in general. But it's a mode of the game that's not really intended for hardcore WoW players in the same way. Uh, it's a kind of a different audience, it's a different style of game, and it's, it's very different in a lot of ways. So it's like you're looking for one audience, but in the process of looking for that audience, you are actually you know courting a, uh, you know, a, a focus group and a target audience of the exact opposite in a lot of cases, right? And so you wanna have the Battle Royale Andes, the Fortnite Andes, you wanna have them try this game out and see what it's like. And uh, you know, having to pay a subscription for that just really isn't a very good prospect this, you know, in this day and age. And um, I think that's a, a bigger problem, probably like it's much bigger than just like this conversation. But if they really wanna have an actual serious feedback, think about it like this. There are way more people that aren't playing World of Warcraft that did play World of Warcraft than currently are playing World of Warcraft. Think about all the people the game used to have in Classic, Wrath, Burning Crusade, and you add up all of those people that have quit all over the years. All of those people are the minimum target audience for something like Plunderstorm. And if you want to get people a reason to log back into the game, making them pay $15 to even try something like this out, especially whenever it's being shown as only like a three-week event, um, I just don't really think you're going to get the type of feedback and the type of audience response that uh, would really make this mode and, you know, make the future of the game uh, the best it possibly can be. So I really hope that Blizzard takes that seriously and they at least give uh, free-to-play players the opportunity to try it out for maybe a weekend or something like that and really get a chance to enjoy it. And so they can get a totally different type of, uh, of audience's feedback and get a totally different demographic of the people that are interested enough to even just try and play it out and see what happens. And so 
that's what my thoughts are. That's why I haven't played Retail WoW. I feel like the game is just too... There's just too much everything. There's too much everything, and I don't feel like my time spent in the game is being rewarded in the same way that it used to be. And I feel like I'm playing the patch, not the expansion. And I just, you know, again, also, like, I've played the game, you know, like, consistently since, like, pretty much forever. I've taken big breaks like this in the past, but this is probably one of the biggest, if not the longest, break that I've had. And I think the reason for that, again, is just, you know, I've had a lot of other stuff going on in my real life also. And so, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people like me, and it's absolutely crucial for Blizzard to be able to attract that new audience of people. And things like Plunderstorm have the possibility to do that, but you need to give them the legs that they deserve. And that means letting anybody try the game out and not just limiting it to only WoW subscribers. And then it also means to try to, you know, make the game accessible, like try to see it through the eyes of a new player. Because I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments of people saying, oh, WoW is easy. And like, you know, you look at their profile picture and it's a picture of like a WoW character and they've been playing ever since Wrath of the Lich King. Oh, wow. It's so easy for you. What a surprise. You've played the game for only 15 years. But I think that if you really approach it from the perspective of a truly new player, of a perspective player, it's just completely um, unapproachable. And I hope that Blizzard can uh, address that. I hope Plunderstorm is one of the first ways that they are addressing that. I think that they have addressed a lot of the things that I've felt were problematic, and I am optimistic about it. I really commend Blizzard in trying something new. I think they're making the right decision by doing it. I know there are some people that disagree with it, and they have every right to do that because, you know, it's their sub too. But I really think this is the right decision for the game uh, to make it healthy in the long term for the most people. So yeah, uh, that's what I think. Uh, huge W for Blizzard. I'm really happy to see it. I hope they keep going. I hope they don't let the negative feedback discourage them. And I hope that they're able to really try to make WoW future-proof by not focusing too much on the past, which is, I think, what they've done for the last 10 years. So anyway, guys, that's about all I've got. Uh, let me know what you think about Plunderstorm in the comments. Are you still playing Retail WoW? Uh, what do you think about all this? Am I, am I right or not? Um, I don't know. Like, this is just my thoughts. I've played the game, you know, pretty much consistently. I've got 35,000 hours in the game, okay, guys? Like, I've played the game quite a bit. Uh, ever since 2006, I started the game in high school. I'm 33 now, and I fucking love it. I, I, I still love the game. I haven't played it in a long time. Still fucking love the game. I just wish I had a better reason to log on and play. And uh, I, don't, I, I don't think it's ever really going to change, honestly. Uh, I'm always going to love the game. But I just had a, wish I had a reason to also play it too, you know? And so, uh, yeah, anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, thanks all for watching. Really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you again next time. Peace.